OK, for our next application we're going to study ellipses and ellipsoids. We're mostly going to focus on ellipses and then at the end I'll say a few remarks about ellipsoids in three dimensions. So an ellipse is a curve in the plane. Uh, here's an example of an ellipse. It looks like a squashed circle. So if you take a circle and you squash it vertically or horizontally, the equation you get looks a lot like the equation of a circle which would be like x squared plus y squared equals a constant, let's say 1. Um, but x and y get um, some extra factors, so x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. This is the equation of the sort of a general equation of an ellipse which has been squashed in the sort of x and y axes. What are a and b? Well, a is like the biggest value x can take, right? Because if x equals a, then a squared over a squared is 1. y has to be 0. So this point here is a 0. This point here is correspondingly b, uh, 0 b. So a and b are telling you exactly how much it's been squished. In other words, if you, um, if you draw a diameter going through the origin from the ellipse to itself the longest diameter you can draw is either in the x or the y direction and it has length 2a or 2b and the shortest is, is the other one so the longest diameter and the shortest diameter are of lengths either 2a or 2b it depends on, like if, if a is bigger than b then this is the longer one otherwise this is the longer one so a is called the semi in, in this picture because it's bigger it's called the semi major axis semi because of this factor of 2 and B is the semi-minor axis. This is if A is bigger than B. Okay, so suppose somebody gives you an ellipse that's not been squashed in the X and Y direction. Maybe they take a circle and they squash it in some other direction. That's still an ellipse, but you know, what's the equation for it? And how do you figure, if somebody gives you the equation, how do you figure out what are the semi-major axis and semi-minor axis? That's what we're going to answer using eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So first of all, what's the general equation of an ellipse? And I'm going to assume it's the center of mass is at the origin, just for simplicity. Um, sorry for the terrible handwriting. Well, the general equation of an ellipse is, um, let's say, a x squared plus b x y plus c y squared equals 1. And again, this 1, it could be some other constant, but I might as well divide by it and absorb it into the constants on the left-hand side. Um, if I wanted the center of mass to be elsewhere, I could also put in terms like plus d x plus e y, but I'm not going to. So this is the general equation of an ellipse. What are a, b and c? They can't be just any old thing because if I take a to be 1 and c to be minus 1 what I get is a hyperbola um, so something like this asymptotic to these two lines that I've drawn. And that doesn't look anything like an ellipse like a squashed circle. So we need some condition on A, B and C to get an ellipse.
So it turns out that the right condition is called positive definiteness. Um, so we want this expression here to always be positive. So this thing is called a quadratic form. So ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared is called positive definite. If it's always positive when you substitute in x or y real numbers. that are not both zero. Okay, so if you stick in any values of x and y, as long as they're not both zero, because obviously that's going to give you zero, then you have to get a positive number. So the general equation of an ellipse is this quadratic form has to be equal to one, and the quadratic, quadratic form has to be positive definite. This is the definition of an ellipse. It's the set of points uh, x, y in R2 such that a x squared plus b x y plus c y squared equals 1. Where sort of a, b and c give a positive definite quadratic form. So the trick for finding the semi-major and semi-minor axis is the following theorem. So it says if you pick uh, coordinates um, so that new x and y axes point along the eigenvectors of the matrix A, B over 2, B over 2, C. I'll explain why this matrix in a minute. Um, and um, so that uh, let me call the i vectors uh, u1 and u2 and so that um, u1 has length 1 and sits at 1, 0 in the new coordinates and u2 has length 1 and sits at 0, 1 in the new coordinates then uh, the equation of the ellipse in the new coordinates becomes lambda 1 x squared plus lambda 2 y squared equals 1 where lambdas are the eigenvalues and actually this is a rotation so this change of coordinates is going to be just a rotation um, I'll explain why again in a minute Okay, so first I better explain what this matrix has to do with anything. Um, well, the trick is um, if I let V be XY and M be A, uh, B over 2, B over 2, C, 
then V transpose MV is XY A X plus B Y over 2 uh, B X over 2 plus C Y and that is um, A X squared plus B X Y over 2 plus B X Y over 2 plus C Y squared so in other words this is our quadratic form A X squared plus B X Y plus C Y squared okay so our quadratic form that we used to cut out our ellipse is uh, V transpose M V in sort of matrix form okay so this is where the matrix comes from let's try and uh, prove the theorem first before proving the theorem I want to prove a lemma which is that if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct in other words not equal eigenvalues of this matrix M then u1 and u2 the eigenvectors are orthogonal and this works more generally if M transpose equals M you will notice this matrix that we had up here is a symmetric matrix its transpose is equal to itself and the argument will give only depends on that condition so um, how does this work um, well being an eigenvector means m u1 equals lambda 1 u1 and m u2 equals lambda 2 u2 so what I want to consider is the expression u1 transpose m u2 on the one hand this is u1 transpose times lambda 2 u2 which is just lambda 2 u1 dot u2 if you remember uh, u1 transpose u2 is the same as u1 dot u2 from quite a lot of lectures ago okay on the other hand m equals m transpose so this is u1 transpose m transpose u2 that's using this uh, m transpose equals m and I'm gonna bend around the equal sign this is um, m u1 all transpose remember if you transpose a product you transpose the individual factors and reverse them m u1 is lambda u1 so this is uh, lambda u lambda 1 u1 transpose u2 and this is lambda 1 u1 dot u2 okay so lambda 1 u1 dot u2 equals lambda 2 u1 dot u2 so lambda 1 minus lambda 2 u1 dot u2 is 0 if these eigenvalues are not the same then you can divide by this and you just get u1 dot u2 equals 0 so these eigenvectors are orthogonal so this is why I'm saying that the change of coordinates in this theorem is just a rotation you have two orthogonal eigenvectors at right angles to one another you just rotate the x and y axes until they point in those two directions that's your change of coordinates so let's see why the theorem is true well um, my vector V in the new coordinates becomes x u1 plus y u2 so if I now 
um, write this expression v transpose m v what I get is x u1 plus y u2 all transposed times m times x u1 plus y u2 so multiplying that out that's x u1 plus y u2 transpose the m hits the u1 because x is just a scalar and that because u1 is an eigenvector m u1 is lambda 1 u1 so I get x lambda 1 u1 and similarly in the second factor I get y lambda 2 u2 um, doing this transpose I'm going to get x u1 transpose plus y u2 transpose remember x and y are just numbers so now I multiply out these brackets and I get x squared lambda 1 times u1 dot u1 so I've assumed that u1 is a unit vector if you look back at the statement of the theorem has length 1 is because I just rotated my axes so that 1 0 is now pointing in the u1 direction so this is 1 I get a term y squared lambda 2 for the same reason and all the cross terms vanish because u1 dot u2 equals 0 by the lemma and that gives me exactly the formula that I wanted if you look back at the statement of the theorem the equation of the ellipse, the ellipse becomes lambda 1 x squared plus lambda 2 y squared equals 1 so what's this theorem saying it's saying that if somebody gives you a quadratic form that's positive definite and asks you what does this ellipse look like that's cut out by this quadratic form all you have to do is write down this matrix compute its eigenvectors and its eigenvalues the eigenvectors are going to be some rotation of the x and y axes you tell them okay well I've got some uh, I'm going to do some rotation to put this back in the uh, standard form and then the sort of a squared and b squared the major and minor axes are going to be related to the eigenvalues so let me write it in red um, remember the the original equation was x squared over a squared instead of lambda 1 x squared so we're going to have um, a equals 1 over root lambda 1 that's the semi-major and the semi-minor axis is going to be 1 over root lambda 2 depending on which of the eigenvalues is bigger okay so the eigenvectors are telling you which directions your ellipse has been squished in the eigenvalues are telling you how much it's been squished let's do an example so the example I want to do is three halves x squared plus y squared minus x y equals one what's the matrix I need to write down it's going to be three halves on the diagonal because the coefficients of x squared and y squared are both three halves on the off diagonal I get b over two so that's minus a half so that's my matrix I need to find its eigenvectors and its eigenvalues so the characteristic polynomial is um, debt of 3 halves minus t minus a half minus a half 3 halves minus t that's 3 halves minus t squared minus a quarter which is t squared minus 3t um, and then 9 over 4 minus 4 that's 8 over 4 that's plus 2 the roots of this uh, quadratic are 3 plus or minus 
square root of 9 minus uh, 8 over 2. So that's 3 plus or minus 1 over 2. So that's 1 or 2. So what are the eigenvectors? When lambda equals 1, we're trying to solve 3 halves minus a half minus a half 3 halves times xy equals xy. That's 3 halves x minus y over 2 equals x and another equation that's going to be equivalent to the first one so I won't write it out and that's saying um, half x equals half y so x equals y so for example the, the vector 1 1 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1 this is not u1 because u1 is supposed to have length 1 this has length uh, square root 2 so we can take u1 to be 1 over root 2, 1, 1. Um, for lambda equals 2, I'm just going to tell you, um, well actually you know what it is, right? Because it has to be orthogonal to this one, so it's basically got to be a multiple of 1 minus 1. So actually we're going to take 1 over root 2 times 1 minus 1. Okay? You can check for yourself that this is correct. This is a an eigenvector with eigenvalue 2. So what does this tell us? Well for a start it tells us the semi-major and semi-minor axes um, they're going to be 1 over root lambda so 1 over root 1 is 1 and 1 over root 2 um, okay so this is smaller so 1 is bigger than 1 over root 2 so 1 is the semi-major axis and how would we rotate this to get back to um, the standard ellipse well u1 is pointing in the direction of the semi-major axis And that's obtained from 1, 0 by a 45 degree rotation clock, uh, anti-clockwise. Right, just draw a picture and think. Here's the standard axes. Here's 1, 1. It's going in that direction, right? This is U1. And U2 is... Um, Actually, maybe for orientation reasons, I'm going to stick the sign in the other other guy, other entry. So U2 points over here. Um, so in other words, our ellipse looks like a standard ellipse that's been rotated through 45 degrees. So it's something more like that where this is length 1 and this is length 1 over root 2. Okay so this is a nifty way of getting information about ellipses and the same thing works in higher dimensions. Exactly the same. Exactly the same argument works for ellipsoids which are like squashed spheres. and in higher dimensions too. So the longest and shortest diameters are going to be in the eigen directions and um, so it doesn't quite work. You can't just say longest and shortest in dimension 3 because there's, you know, you might have squashed uh, by a factor of 2 in one axis, 3 in another axis and 4 in the third axis and then what is 3? It's, it's not the longest or the shortest, it's somewhere in between. But the corresponding notion of semi-major and semi-minor for ellipsoids correspond to the eigenvalues and the eigendirections.